I'm angry at Mark and Shauna for not giving me a chance to figure it out. Instead, they're forcing me to the street where the little bit of money I have left has to go now for sleeping in a flea bag hotel instead of being over here packing my stuff up. Very frustrating. My parole officer's aware of it. He's, he's giving me his blessings to do what I have to do. But man, this place stinks. It smells like, uh, I don't know if I can say it in polite company, but it's, it really smells bad. It's got that musty, crack house, sweaty type smell to it. I might just sleep in the car and donate this room to a homeless person to take a shower. When I started writing to Bill, and when we made the decision to allow him to come and parole here, we definitely didn't know as much as we should have known. I've definitely been hurt by Bill's behavior toward me. You are my friend, and yet you're going to cast me aside and treat me like a piece of trash. You've come down to dress kind of inappropriately for you saying you're a Christian. No. When your husband's at work, so Never. please. It's been a hard thing to deal with. What I've learned from this is that people aren't always what they seem. Someone can seem nice writing letters and be a whole different ball game when they come into your home. Mark is going to make sure that Bill gets all of his things out of the room. I'm going to be away from the house somewhere else because I don't want to have any more contact with him. I did reach my breaking point with this. I've had enough. Hey, it's Mark. What do you want? Hey, uh, just checking in with you. Uh, I need to see when you can come over and we can uh, get your stuff out. Uh, probably next month. We'll make some reservations. Well, I'm going to have to start without you then. No, you don't want to do that. You don't want to go. On, you don't want to start down that path with me. I don't need any slick comments, OK? We're trying to handle this civilly. I'm trying to work out my schedule for today. I'll, I'll get there this morning sometime. I got you. Bill enjoys playing with our heads, but the game is over. It's been nothing but chaos since he came, and Bill only has a small window of time to get his stuff out of here while Sharna is gone. I don't want to wait for Bill to start moving his stuff out, but I can't start packing without him because before Bill left to visit his girlfriend in California, he installed a lock on his door, and we don't have the key. It's kind of ridiculous that I need to put a lock in a Christian family's home to stop them uh, from violating my privacy and Shauna from wanting to creep in in the middle of the night when I'm in bed. You know, I, I had the lock installed on my bedroom for security purposes because I can't trust the people I live with. I think Bill has a lot of paranoia. The fact is, Sharna's very uncomfortable with the way that he's insinuated feelings that she may have towards him. Bill's challenged me as man of the house, and I do feel kind of emasculated at this point, but I'm not gonna allow Bill to try to control my life. Huh. I have a lot of mixed feelings about uh, moving out and coming here to pack up. But in a way, it's good because it'd be that much less stress, that much less drama. So I see you got in. Yeah, you left the windows uh, unlocked. I could put up with anything having done so much time in prison, but this is kind of to a new level. It's kind of a relief that I can actually be somewhere where I can eat pepperoni. Why are you evicting me anyway? What's, what's the real reason? Bill, you know the ongoing problems with Sharna. And the big factor that drives that is you. So why don't you make this easy and evict her? Well, here's here's the problem. You you couldn't lay off Sharna. 
I asked you a thousand times to please check her for her nasty comments towards me. I told you a red line in the sand is you continuing to harass her. Nobody harassed her. Oh, well, you're way too worried about her, Bill. I'm not worried about her. I, I worry about you. Why don't you worry about yourself? I am. To have Bill disrespect my wife like that is definitely not cool. I have to put my wife and our sanity before Bill. We need to bring peace into our house and reclaim our lives. Unfortunately, time has come to, you know, to end this. A good friend of mine is going to let me live with him while I get on my feet going forward and while I look for a place to live permanently. Am I hurt? Sure. Am I disappointed? Am I upset? Am I angry? A little bit. But it is what it is. I have to live my life, let them live theirs, go about my business, put them in the rearview mirror, because I know where I'm going. I know I'm leaving behind a good environment physically, but emotionally and mentally, it was killing me. I think that's about it. The most difficult thing about seeing Bill go is that I'm unsure of his future. He could fall through the cracks. He could end up somewhere else where he'd have much more temptation for the things out in the world that, that can get him in trouble. Sorry, things turned out the way they did. No hugs. Hugs are for brothers. I don't know for brothers anymore, but uh, anyway, I got to get going because I got I to gotta get this stuff uh, put in a friend's house. Take care, man. All right, Bill. Anything else? I just hope that um, time and space could make things better. Yeah. I'm sorry we failed you. Sorry, sorry about it, man. Hey, I'm sorry, man. I know we all three had our times where he fell short, and uh, I believe in taking responsibility for my part. And I know Sharna's struggled with the times that she was, that she could have done better, and we've, we've all had our, our times where we could have done better. All right. All right. Take care of yourself. All right. Just too bad that, uh, that it had to end like this. For me, a thing that I felt the most was that I felt very betrayed because Bill had made all of these promises, you know, the months before he got out, and he didn't do any of it. Instead, he turned on us and he harassed us, he accused us of things. It, it was just a time that I'm never going to forget, but I would like to forget and wish it never had happened. with Mary. I want to give you a tour of it. Since I moved out of Marcus Harness, life has been great. Mary has now moved to Indiana with me, and we have our own place together. Watch this. I can now wipe my butt without it being documented by Mark. I have all the food I want. I have my own ice. It's wonderful. Life is good. Guess what I have? I have smoked ham. You see the ham? I'm very happy. Our wedding plans are as soon as we can afford it and decide where we want to go, we're going to get married. Say hello to my new Cadillac. Beautiful Cadillac, as you can see. I put my criminal life behind me. I'm writing books now about people I've met along the way, about criminal justice reform, crime victim advocacy. I've never been happier in my life. I'm so thrilled that I'm in love, and I have a woman who accepts me unconditionally. I'm grateful for the initial offer and willingness to take me in get on my feet post-incarceration, not be a victim of recidivism like so many people back and forth to prison. I pray for Mark and Sean. I hope they learn to treat people a little better. I'm open to wherever the future lies. Every day of this challenge and this things I'm learning is better than one more day in prison or the prison of Mark and Sean's house. I have nobody ridiculing me. I have nothing but love and support now in a very, very peaceful household. God bless.
After 18 years, I am finally free. They're just out of prison. I'm about to take an inmate in to live with me. You have your list of rules. What the hell did I get myself into here?